Hey everybody, I'm James Gunn. I'm the co-CEO of DC Studios. James Gunn has just unveiled the full DC Studios slate of movies and TV shows for the coming years. The list includes five movies and five HBO Max series, headlined by two Batman movies, a Man of Steel reboot and a Wonder Woman prequel. The lineup unsurprisingly includes some of the company's most stellar heroes and franchises, but it also offers some surprising choices featuring more obscure properties. This shouldn't come as a surprise, given James Gunn's track record which includes the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy and the Peacemaker TV series. We're here to take a look at what's in store for the DC Universe moving forward. James Gunn and Peter Safran have stated that they want to change the disconnected nature of the various DC properties, bringing them all together under a coherent story arc. While it's certainly true that the DC landscape has been pretty disjointed, with entities like the Snyderverse, the Arrowverse, Robert Pattinson's Batman, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker and projects like Doom Patrol, Titans and Shazam, it's still somewhat sad to see that DC are still trying to play catch up to Marvel's MCU. Gunn made it clear that there will still be some projects outside of the main continuity, including Matt Reeves' Batman, Superman and Lois, and Teen Titans Go!, but they will be brought under the Elseworlds banner. Elseworlds is also the name of a DC Comics imprint, taking place outside the main comic book canon, very similar to Marvel's What If Reality, allowing creators a chance to use DC characters in more imaginative, wild and avant-garde stories, without impacting the main continuity. Some of the most popular titles include Gotham by Gaslight, which pits Batman against the notorious Jack the Ripper in a Victorian-era Gotham City, Superman Red Sun, a what-if story penned by Mark Miller in which Superman's ship landed in the Soviet Union, instead of the United States and he becomes a super-soldier for Stalin, rather than an apple pie-eating champion of truth, justice and the American way, and a crossover that seems ripped right out of an online fan-fiction script, Batman and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Before we get to the main titles announced, we have to mention that there are still some holdovers from the previous era. First, there's the Shazam sequel Fury of the Gods that is still coming out in March. We will also still get the planned Flash standalone movie, but there is no word on whether Ezra Miller will reprise his role as the Scarlet Speedster, after his recent legal troubles. Safran however mentioned that he remained hopeful Miller was on a path to betterment, as he was receiving treatment. The movie will likely draw inspiration from the Flashpoint story arc from the comics, a huge 2011 event, in which Barry Allen travels back in time to prevent his mother's murder, resulting in a major change to the timeline. In this new reality, the world is on the brink of destruction, as Wonder Woman's Amazons are waging a bitter war against Aquaman's Atlanteans. Thomas Wayne actually became Batman, instead of his son Bruce, who was the one being killed in Crime Alley. This is a much more ruthless and violent Batman. Unlike Bruce, who is often motivated by a desire to protect Gotham, Thomas is driven by a thirst for vengeance. He has no qualms about using firearms, which is in stark contrast to Bruce's strict no-gun policy. In Flashpoint, Thomas Wayne is a central figure, and his actions have a significant impact on the events of the storyline. The much-anticipated Blue Beetle movie is also still slated to take place and, excitingly, it won't be part of the Elseworlds universe, but the main DCU continuity. Which means we might get to see Blue Beetle interacting with Batman and Superman at some point down the line. Another project that is scheduled to go ahead is planned as Aquaman 2 The Lost Kingdom, starring Jason Momoa. Another entry into the main DCU canon, this movie could mean that Momoa will likely be playing the main version of Aquaman moving forward. So Flashpoint will reset the timelines, allowing DC to recast a lot of actors, but some might return, including Jason Momoa as Aquaman and possibly Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. Now on to the new project announcements. Gunn mentioned that this new chapter in the DC Universe was called Gods and Monsters. This is probably unrelated, but Gods and Monsters is the name of a 2015 animated superhero film and comic book series, featuring an alternate version of the Justice League. Superman, Batman and Wonder Woman are powerful and feared beings, who operate outside the law and are being hunted by the government. They aren't superheroes in the traditional sense, but rather anti-hero vigilantes. For instance, Batman isn't Bruce Wayne, but rather Kirk Langston, a scientist who turned himself into a vampire. It's Morbin time, it's Batman time, anyway. Much more interesting is that Gods and Monsters is also a major theme in Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Throughout the movie, Lex Luthor contrasts gods to monsters and reflects on the role of Superman as a Promethean hero stealing fire from the gods. Choosing this specific name for DC's next cinematic stage probably wasn't random, so the theme of gods and monsters might play a big role in the coming years. The first entry into the new DCU is the animated series Creature Commandos. The original comic book team of this name was made up of classic monsters, 
a werewolf, a vampire, Frankenstein's monster and a gorgon, coming together to fight an even greater monster, the Nazi war machine. This one gives off very strong Hellboy vibes, with the team resembling Dark Horse's Bureau of Paranormal Research and Defense. Creature Commandos got several reboots, with modern interpretations adding a mummy, a gill man and a cyborg to the original roster. The team also makes an appearance in the previously mentioned Flashpoint storyline. We already know the lineup of this modern-day update, Rick Flagg Sr. is the father of Rick Flagg whom we've met in the Suicide Squad movies. Next we have Nina Mazursky, who is a Gilman mermaid hybrid, acting as the team's scientist and inventor. Dr. Phosphorus is usually depicted as a Batman villain and in Flashpoint he ends up betraying his teammates, so look out for this guy to be the surprise villain of the franchise. Next we have Eric Frankenstein, who's pretty much Mary Shelley's monster, but with steampunk guns. His estranged wife, the Bride of Frankenstein is also part of the team. In fact, she seems to be the leader of the group. G.I. Robot, as the name suggests, is a robotic soldier. Finally, we have Weasel, whom you might remember from the Suicide Squad sequel. Speaking of Suicide Squad, the first live-action series of the new DC continuity is Waller, a spin-off of James Gunn's own Peacemaker starring John Cena, itself a spin-off of Suicide Squad 2. Viola Davis will return to the character of Amanda Waller. The series will be co-created by Jeremy Carver, the genius behind the brilliant Doom Patrol and Crystal Henry who created the Watchmen TV show. Peacemaker Season 2 is still scheduled to air as planned, with Waller taking place between Seasons 1 and 2. With that, we come to the true beginning of the new DCU, with none other than the Man of Steel himself getting his own movie, Superman Legacy. This won't be an origin story, though it will feature a younger Clark Kent. Peter Safran said that the story will revolve around Superman balancing his Kryptonian heritage with his human upbringing. The movie is scheduled to be released on July 11, 2025. Unfortunately, we know for a fact that Henry Cavill won't be returning to the franchise. There are strong indications that the creators will take a lot of inspiration from Grant Morrison's 12-issue All-Star Superman series running from 2005 to 2008. This story creates some thought-provoking challenges for the Man of Steel, with his love for humanity and hopeful nature shining through, even as he is forced to face his own mortality. The story is a loving celebration of Superman and his enduring impact on popular culture. One of the most character-defining moments of the series is Superman saving a girl from committing suicide. But instead of simply swooping in and carrying her to safety, Superman lands beside her, comforts her and tells her that she is stronger than she thinks. Pure class. Next up, we have the HBO TV series Lanterns. The original plans for a Green Lantern Corps show have been scrapped and replaced with a new series, focusing on Jon Stewart and Hal Jordan. The two have teamed up in several comic book titles, most recently in 2020's Green Lantern Earth 1 Volume 2. So there's plenty of material to choose from, should the showrunners decide to take inspiration from the comics. James Gunn has said that this won't be a space opera, but rather a terrestrial cop show, comparing it to True Detective. However, the mystery the two lanterns will have to investigate will likely have important implications for the wider story that is being developed for the DC Universe. The next film will be James Gunn's passion project. The Authority is based on a property of the DC-owned Wildstorm imprint, focusing on a superhero team that's pretty much a militarized version of the Justice League. More violent and with a no-nonsense approach to dispensing justice. Think the boys meets Watchmen. James Gunn appropriately compared them to Jack Nicholson's character in A Few Good Men. You can't handle the truth! The series is edgy, hyper-violent, gory and deconstructionist. No wonder James Gunn is anxious to bring it into the DC Universe and it's interesting to see how the authority will fit into the larger narrative. Especially given the more kid-friendly approach to Diamond characters like Superman and Wonder Woman. Speaking of Wonder Woman, we don't know whether she'll even make an appearance in the upcoming TV series Paradise Lost, but we know for a fact that her Amazonian sisters will take center stage. In the comic book miniseries titled Paradise Lost, a great Amazonian civil war broke out between two rival factions. It will be interesting to see what the connections will be between the two mediums. There's also another precedent in the DC Comics, where another Amazonian civil war took place between two rival tribes, one led by Queen Hippolyta, Diana's mother, whose followers abandoned humanity and retreated to Temescara and another tribe led by her sister, Antiope, who instead took half of the Amazons with her to Egypt, creating a second Amazonian nation. Gunn has said this will be like Game of Thrones on Temescara. Batman is also getting his own movie, The Brave and the Bold. It has been officially confirmed that Robert Pattinson's Batman will not be the main DCU incarnation of the Dark Knight moving forward. Instead, he will remain in his own separate Elseworlds universe, 
while a different Batman will become the main caped crusader after the Flashpoint event. This new Batman will also give us our first cinematic Damian Wayne as Robin. Damian Wayne is the biological son of Bruce Wayne who was raised by his mother Talia al Ghul in the League of Assassins. He was trained as an assassin from a tender age, groomed to take his grandfather Raish al Ghul's place as the head of the League. However, Batman saved him from a life of crime and made him the new Robin. Damian is often portrayed as hot-headed and impulsive, but also possessing a strong sense of justice and loyalty. Batman's compassion and moral code is often at odds with Damian's upbringing as a ruthless and vicious assassin, as their father-son dynamic develops. This will be the kickoff point for the entire Bat family, so we are looking forward to finally seeing characters like Nightwing, Huntress, Red Hood and Cassandra Kane on the big screen. This brings us to a highly anticipated project, the Booster Gold TV show. Booster Gold is a loser from the 25th century who travels back in time to use his futuristic technology to become a superhero in modern-day Metropolis. Known for his showmanship and love of fame, Booster uses his powers for personal gain but gradually becomes a true hero, often teaming up with other members of the Justice League. His egotism, showboating and smart mouth are staples of his character. Think Darkwing Duck meets Inspector Gadget, James Gunn correctly described the project as the superhero story of imposter syndrome. Another famous Kryptonian survivor will also get her fair share of attention, with the movie Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow being in the works. This film will be based on the comic book story of the same name by Tom King, in which Supergirl is defined in stark contrast to her cousin Clark Kent. Kal-El landed on Earth as an alien, but he was raised on a farm by a loving true blue American family, becoming Clark Kent. Kara Zor-El, on the other hand, saw the destruction of Krypton and the death of everyone she ever loved, then she was sent to Earth to protect her cousin, only to arrive and find he has become a world-famous and beloved superhero who doesn't really need her protection. This leaves her feeling a strong sense of survivor's guilt and questioning her own purpose in life. This will likely be a more mature movie, with a strong emphasis on character analysis. The last film project unveiled by James Gunn is Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing is the protector of all plant life on Earth. His initial origin story was pretty standard, as a scientist who was transformed into a plant-like creature after a chemical lab accident. However, Alan Moore reimagined Swamp Thing as an elemental force with delusions of humanity that constantly finds itself confronted by occult forces, thus cementing the character as a true horror icon. It's no wonder that Swamp Thing is frequently paired with the supernatural team of Justice League Dark. James Gunn promises this will be a dark horror story, proving that the DCU is willing to explore other genres and won't shy away from circumventing the traditional superhero formula. So that concludes James Gunn's announcement for the DC Universe in the coming years. Which projects are you most excited for? Are you disappointed by any of these announcements? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification icon. Until next time, stay nerdy.